Hey chums! This is the opening weekend of the Epcot Festival of the Holidays. And I'm super excited because that means lots of food, lots oh, of treats. Yes, <laughs> indeed. We've already got our passport, festival passport book here, and this is our guide to the treats. So we are gonna go ahead and get started right now and show you guys all the treats around World Showcase. So over here, we have some really awesome decorations. We've got Goofy struggling with some lights. <laughs> and then we have Donald, it looks like he's scolding either Chip or Dale. I, I never could tell the difference between the two, but this is super fun anyway. Here's the beautiful Christmas tree that they have set up right at the entrance to World Showcase. And I don't know if you guys can see, but each one of these ornaments represents a different country. Right there we have Canada, we have the United Kingdom, etc. From the Holiday Sweets and Treats booth, I got a peppermint sundae. So I don't know if I'd really call this a sundae. All it really is is ice cream with a whipped cream and some like peppermint sprinkles. There's no hot fudge or anything, but nonetheless, they are calling it a sundae. And it is gluten-free, so I'm gonna give it a try. And I believe I had this last year. I think this is a repeat. Very simple. It is just chocolate ice cream with whipped cream and some peppermint. Nonetheless, it's still festive. All right, so I'm on a quest to find gluten-free stuff for myself at this festival. And so far I've been having pretty good luck. Um, I'm gonna have to use the book for this one. I stopped over at, it's usually the Hawaii booth, but they're calling it, I think, Mele Kalakamaka. I can't pronounce that properly, so I apologize. But this dish over here is called Lomi Lomi Salmon. And there's a little mayonnaise in here, and you see a little bit of onion and some yuca chips. It is gluten-free. Some salmon roe on top with the salmon. Let's give this a try. I like this. If you like salmon, this is something you probably would like. It's, it tastes like it's salmon and some sort of like a dressing and then it has the mayonnaise on top of it so it all works pretty well. And it's a little bit salty too. I mean, overall, I think this is pretty good. I like it. From Yukon Holiday Kitchen over in the Canada area, I got beef bourguignon. This is one of my favorite dishes of all time. And um, my grandmother used to make a mean beef bourguignon. We've got these beautiful chunks of beef and potatoes and carrots and these little cocktail onions. It looks very good. Let's see how it tastes. Usually, I tend to like things coming from the Canada booth. Every time for the um, the uh, Food and Wine Festival, they have a fantastic filet. So let's try the beef burger yum. That's pretty good. If I had anything to critique on this, I would say there's not enough of a wine flavor. The beef burger yum is supposed to taste like wine, and this doesn't, but it's very tasty. It's still, still a very tasty dish, um, and the beef is nice and tender. From the booth called Holiday Hearth Desserts, I found another gluten-free item. I got these peppermint barks. So basically this is just a bag of chocolate with peppermint, white chocolate with peppermint. I'm actually gonna try one now. I love anything peppermint, so I'm sure these are gonna be great. I mean, it's, it's good, very good. Not the greatest chocolate quality in the world, but nonetheless, this is delicious. I mean, white chocolate with peppermint is, it's gonna be good no matter what, so. From the Holiday Hearth Dessert booth. <laughs> we just stopped by Lahayam, the booth of my people. <laughs> and I got a potato laki. They actually have um, potato lockies with salmon also, both of them gluten-free, but because I just had salmon at one of the other booths, I decided let's just go with the simple laki. So let's give this a try. It is not easy to get through these little suckers with just a fork, but make do. They're good. 
they're always, I mean, they're always going to be good. It's just like a little fried potato made into a pancake. But, I mean, when I think of these, I remember being a kid and eating them and when they were fresh, so they were still really hot. These aren't really that hot, but nonetheless, they're still good. They're still really good. Also from La Haim, I decided to get a pastrami on rye. Comes with a pickle, some mustard. I'm just gonna go ahead and dig right in, take this thing apart and uh, yeah, here we go. Looks pretty good. Mm. That is pretty tasty. It's not too salty. Sometimes, um, like pastrami and corned beef and things like that can be a little salty. This isn't. Very good, balanced flavors. Bread is nice and soft, I love it. And the finale from La Chaim is the black and white cookie, which I am a huge fan of. Backside's a little messy, so just be, be aware. The chocolate runs all the way through the back. Let's try it. Mm. And this is a plant-based cookie. Yeah. That is really good. It tastes like it should. It tastes like a black and white, black and white cookie should. It's nice and soft and spongy. I think it's great. Very good job. So that black and white cookie is actually part of what they call the cookie stroll. You take a look here in the passport book. You buy five different cookies from around World Showplace or World Showcase. I'm sorry, and um, you can collect the redemption cookie at the very end for free. So on the cookie stroll, there's the gingerbread cookie, the Snickers snickerdoodle, the black and white cookie, the chocolate crinkle, co crinkle cookie, and the Linzer cookie. And then you get your redemption cookie at the end. We are actually skipping the cookie stroll today because we have dinner plans. We don't want to get so full on cookies. Also, Mel can't really eat cookies unless they're gluten free and these are not. So it would be me eating five giant cookies and then going to dinner after all of this. I think it would be a little too much, but. I couldn't resist the black and white cookie because they're delicious. This weekend is also the start of Hanukkah. So they do have some Hanukkah stuff going on over here at Epcot. They have a storyteller. Those are the show times. And you can find the storyteller over here when they're on over by the Lahayam booth. And I got my shirt that Adam got me <laughs> to celebrate the first day of Hanukkah. <laughs> Tangerine Cafe in Morocco is actually what they're using as the booth here. I think Mel is going to get a kebab because they are gluten free. So, as Adam said, I was going to get a kebab because they are gluten free. So they have chicken and then they have lamb. So this over here is the lamb. That's the one I decide to go with. I believe it's called um, lamb kefta. 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 And it comes with a chickpea salad. And I believe this is aioli. Aioli, however you say it, that's on top of it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, there, it's ground up. There's. Um, you could see that it's ground up and the different stuff that they put in it. It looks like there's onion and spice. I'm sure, it's going to be good. It's good. I would call this dish like a Mediterranean meatloaf. <laughs> That's what it tastes like. It tastes like a little meatloaf with different flavorings and the um, sauce that's on top of it. But it's good. Let's give this um, chickpea salad a try. Too. From Shiwasu in Japan, I got the Chirashi Sushi Tree. This thing looks amazing. So this consists of some rice with sushi grade, I'm sorry, sashimi grade tuna, salmon, ikura, and yellowtail with vegetables. This is the prettiest little dish, I swear. This is, as soon as I saw this, I fell in love because I love art, I love sushi, I love food, and Pull out my heartstrings when you combine all of them together. All right, let's check it out and try it. This is gonna obviously have to be eaten in pieces because that is way. Now let's see that's how way you do too this. big for a mouthful. I'm gonna kind of pull it apart and just try a little piece at a time, like kind of deconstruct it if I can. All right, let's try it and see how we do. 
It tastes just as good as it looks. That is delicious. That cream sauce is like a wasabi cream, um, but it doesn't overpower anything. The spicy mayo is a little sweet. The veggies are fresh, and that fish is absolutely fresh. There is zero fishiness to that fish. It just tastes clean and light. I absolutely love it. The candlelight processional is back. Obviously right now it's not going on, but towards the evening time it is. And if that's something that you're interested in, they have different uh, guests that will be narrating it. So if you are planning to come, you can go online and check the date and see who will be narrating when you're here, if that's something you're interested in checking out. And I know that they also have some dining packages as well, which I believe also uh, does something to get you better seating for this. So again, you know, that's all information that if you are coming, you can check out to see who's narrating and uh, what those different packages are. The amphitheater where they are doing the candlelight processional is right across from the America Pavilion. From the Italy booth, I decided to get the mezzaluna crocanti, otherwise known as fried ravioli. Look at these delicious little crispy pockets of joy with some pomodoro sauce. All right, I'm just going to dig right in. They're a little hot. I like very, very bubbly That would have been my other choice. There's so much flavor here. It's delicious. I can tell the oil that they're frying them in is not some old stale oil. It's been recently changed. Very good. Lots of little herbs on here. You can see all these little pieces of Italian herbs on these. It's delicious. Absolutely love it. We are over by the Germany booth. We're not going to stop and get something over here, but I did want to show this. They have this display over here of the Nutcracker, and I just thought it was super cute and super festive, so I wanted to just stop here for a moment to show this. Over here at the festival market, this is really cute. You can get custom ornaments made. A couple things I want to mention because I see these questions pop up all the time in Disney groups. What happens if you have a dining reservation and you get a virtual queue for Ratatouille or any ride I guess they decide to do a virtual queue with? That happened to us today. We, at one o'clock, joined the virtual queue for Ratatouille and they gave us a boarding group scheduled to, to be available at about 5.30, which is when we have a dining reservation at Beaches and Cream. So the answer to that is we did ask a cast member and they said that it saved the information that you had a boarding group today. So if, if the time has passed for your boarding group, go to your dining reservation because that you're gonna get charged for if you don't make it to it. Um, Ratatouille, they'll just let you come back later and ride it. Yeah. It's stored, so when they scan your magic band, your pass, or your park ticket, whatever you're using, it'll be in there that you had uh, that you were supposed to go on Ratatouille and you'll still be able to ride. Now it is recommended that you take a screenshot of your saved virtual queue screen. Just so, in case. Yeah, so if you go and do the, uh, the, the Disney Genie app, and go into my cues going to like if you're going to join a virtual queue next to that you'll see my cues click that you'll see your virtual queue for whatever ride you've selected and then you're going to take a screenshot of that just in case you should be able to just come back later with no problems but just in case of anything it's good to have that screenshot now i have a question <laughs> i've seen a lot of too is it used to be if a ride went down they used to give you a fast pass to come back and to ride the ride later in the day or you could ride something else if that ride never comes back up. So the question I've also seen is what happens now because Disney Genie has replaced the free fast pass system so now they have this, this paid thing in place right, if you want to use that, the lightning lane. Yeah. 
they will still give you what would be equivalent to like the fast pass so that you could come back because that happened to us today too. We were online for Frozen, Frozen went down, they had us wait for a little bit and it wasn't coming back up. They ended up scanning, again, magic bands, tickets, um, park pa passes, whatever you have with you. And then you're able to come back and go through the lightning lane to ride that ride. So yeah. those are a couple things I just wanted to mention because I know that some people are I've seen are still asking questions about it. Um, we did experience both today, so that's the information of what happens when you run into such situations. They actually made it pretty easy and pretty painless, so props to Disney for that. All right, chums, that is going to do it for us today here at Epcot. Be sure to subscribe to this channel right this second if you've not done so already. If you'd like to continue to see content like this, that helps this channel immensely. Smack that like button. That also helps this channel immensely. And hit the notification icon. So it looks like a little bell if you want to receive notifications every time we upload a new video. Until next time, we will see you guys at the parks.